Hello there, it's Pastor Dave once again, and I just want to say thank you for joining us. This is another Fellowship Friends reading from the book that we've been going through called Spurgeon Stories for Children, and you'll remember it is written by a man named Tony Hutter. Today we are reading a story called A Proud Man Applies to the College. And before we start with the story, would you just please bow your heads with me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity to once again read one of these stories from the account of Charles Spurgeon's life. And Lord, we know ultimately uh, he was only a man, but he served a great Savior and a great God. And that is the encouragement here, Lord, that you use men like Spurgeon and so many others, men and women, Lord, to do your work, Lord, to serve you and to honor you with their lives, Lord. And we are encouraged by the example that they have set for us, but we know ultimately the glory goes to you. So we thank you for this story. God, I pray that you would open the ears and the hearts of those that are listening today. Pray for the children, God, that you would give them a wisdom provided through your Holy Spirit to understand these truths. I pray for the parents, Lord, that you would encourage them to teach and to instruct on what these truths mean in the Christian's life, Lord. And I thank you for how you'll work these things out. And most of all, we pray that you would be honored and glorified during this time. And in your Son's name, our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ, we ask all these things. Amen. So today's story again is called A Proud Man Applies to the College. And the text that we're given is from Proverbs 16, 18, which says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. One Sunday morning after the morning service, Spurgeon went into the vestry and was told that a, ma a young man had to speak to him. Spurgeon always wanted to be available to people, so the young man came in. Sir, he said, I want to enter your college and should like to enter it at once. Spurgeon replied, Well, we don't have room at the, at the moment, but we shall consider you. The man said, But mine is a remarkable case, sir. You have probably never received such an application as mine before. Spurgeon therefore gave the young man an application form to enter the college and told him to come back the following day. The man claimed to have read a great many books and he told Spurgeon that many people could testify that he could preach well and if he could have a proper interview, he was sure that he could convince Spurgeon of his ability at once. As Spurgeon listened, he realized that the man was very proud of himself. We cannot have you in the college, said Spurgeon. Why not? asked the young man. I will tell you plainly, said Spurgeon. You are so dreadfully clever that I could not insult you by receiving you into the college where we have none but rather ordinary men. The man looked at Spurgeon very severely and said with dignity, do you mean to say that because I have an unusual genius and have produced in myself a, a gigantic mind such as is rarely seen, I am refused admittance in your college? Yes, answered Spurgeon, for that very reason. Then, sir, you ought to allow me a trial of my preaching abilities. Choose any text you like or suggest any subject you please, and here in this very room I will speak about it or preach on it and you will be surprised. No, Spurgeon replied. Thank you. I would rather not have the trouble of listening to you. Trouble? said the man. I assure you, it will be the greatest possible pleasure you could have. Yes, Spurgeon said. It might be, but I feel myself unworthy of so great a privilege. Spurgeon was certainly right about the man's pride, wasn't he? Sadly, he later heard that the man got into trouble with the law and was accused in a court of crime. In that, if that young man knew the Bible so well, he should have known that Proverbs 16, 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We should never be proud of ourselves and of what we have done. Rather, we should be humble and give all the glory to God. Well, what a, what a wonderful lesson that is for all of us. And, and just a, such a simple account in this story gives us a real picture of what kind of damage pride can have in our life. And even though that man might have been gifted, 
Um, Spurgeon saw that he had a seed of pride in his heart and he knew how dangerous and destructive that can be. And so what a lesson that is for us. And even though God has promised that he will give us gifts to encourage and to strengthen and be used in the church, we ought never to be proud of them. We ought to be thankful and we ought to see, seek to serve God with those gifts and, and be ever so thankful with the fruit that comes from them, that we give glory to God because it is his work in us that produces that fruit. So let's pray now as we remember these things. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for once again this wonderful time. Lord, I pray that you would encourage us to recognize that all good and all perfect things, all good and perfect gifts come from you, the Father of lights. And Lord, may we remember that we have nothing to boast in save that of Christ. We can boast in our Lord and Savior, not because of our own goodness, but because of his merit and his righteousness. We are now seen good as good in your sight. And Lord, I thank you for the fact that we have a hope and a joy and a assurance if we are your children to know that you are a God who is faithful until the end. And we can be sure that we will never you will never leave us or forsake us. And Lord, I thank you so much that we've had this lesson again to remind us of how destructive pride can be. And yet we, all to, we ought to ultimately, with everything that we have, give you the honor and glory and praise because all things that we have in this life that are good are from you. And, and they are not of our own. They are not because we have a goodness in, of, in and of ourselves that we have them. It is not because of our own work our own wisdom or anything else or it is simply because you are a gracious loving God and may we be ever so thankful for all things and again I ask that you would remind us of these things and again I pray that the the parents would teach these things to the children and and these truths are so vital for for all of us really but I thank you so much for for once again using this time to instruct us to make us more pleasing to you and we thank you for all these things. And again, we ask him in our Lord and Savior's name, Jesus Christ. Amen.